They moved the World Golf Championships from Miami to Mexico City. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? So they moved, think of it, they moved the PGA Tour, moved the World Golf Championships from Miami, where they're furious, to Mexico City. Not good. But that's okay. Folks, it's all going to be settled. You vote for Donald Trump as president. If I become your president, this, this stuff is all going to stop. Welcome back. Donald Trump expressing his displeasure for the PGA Tour, deciding to move uh, next year's World Championship of Golf to Mexico City. PGA Commissioner Tim Fincham says the sponsorship money needed for the tournament at Trump National Doral wasn't up to par. Teeing up this move to Mexico to discuss this further, we welcome back the man who invented the concept of covering the intersection of sports and business, the sports professor, Rick Haro. Rick, great to have you with us. So what do you think about this? Do you really believe the PGA commissioner? Is this really just about the money? Well, let me overlay a little bit of this, Scott. I remember I've been in uh, South Florida sports business for the last 900 years, and I remember going to the Doral Eastern Open and going to the Ryder event and the Ford event. And it is technically true that a lot of the sponsors after Cadillac chose not to continue the relationship. Now, who knows why sponsors drop out? There are a lot of other Trump-related activities where sponsors have not joined in or things have been canceled. And are they because the event's not as big as it used to be? Is it because they want to avoid the controversy of Donald Trump? I don't know. The bottom line is that there was a lot of discussion about this over the last couple of years, and now it's happened. But it has nothing to do with building a wall. It has nothing to do with Mexico. It has to do with the sponsors back home. And as a South Floridian, I know they're in danger of losing the tennis tournament as well. That's the bigger issue. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff to do in South Florida. That's one of the problems that they, not just these events face, but also the professional franchises face. You know, it's not like uh, Milwaukee in the wintertime where there's not a lot to do. In South Florida, there's always something to do. Uh, here is uh, the PGA Tour Commissioner, Tim Fincham, speaking about the decision. You can hear it from himself. Here are his own words about why they decided to move this tournament. From a golf standpoint, uh, we have no issues with Donald Trump. From a political standpoint, we are neutral. PGA Tour has never been involved or cares to be involved in presidential politics. This is not a political decision. We are keen on coming back to Doral. Uh, we need to find the right property to resume our long-term uh, involvement in the community. We're proud of being there for over 50 years. Uh, and we'd like to come back. So maybe they'll come back to South Florida. You know, this is an important part of the uh, beginning of the PGA Tour in the springtime in the Florida. In Florida, they can't really play a lot of places. Uh, but the right property, do you see them actually returning to a different golf course, Rick? Well, he's talking about another kind of property. He's also talking about something other than the World Golf Challenge. Uh, that in the Florida Tour uh, and swing is very important. It starts in Palm Beach, then it goes there, then it goes to Tampa, then it goes to Orlando. So that's been set for a while. And again, there is a history and a tradition. And you may call me the guy that started sports business. I'm an old dude that grew up in South Florida. And to that, I'm very sorry. And Doral has been an incredible property, the other definition, for a long time. So maybe they'll find the right event to marry with Doral. It just remains to be seen. Yeah, some of the South Florida-based golfers, uh, Ricky Fowler, uh, and they, they say it's sad, it's confusing. They don't really understand why. Uh, and also Jack Nicholas, who has, I believe, said he's going to support Trump on the presidential election, uh, sent us this statement today, quote, I'm disappointed for Doral and the city of Miami. Both have been a staple on the PGA Tour schedule as well as many as my own since my rookie year in 1962. My only hope is that golf played at its highest level will soon return to Miami and Trump Doral. So there you go, Jack Nicholas. Uh, you know, there's a lot of charity work involved in these types of events, too, and some kids could lose out because Jack Nicholas very involved in raising money for kids, sick kids. So that, there's another side effect of all this. Uh, Rick, I want to talk about uh, the Rio Olympics, too, because there are concerns about the Zika virus. In fact, today, Florida Governor Rick Scott uh, basically begging President Obama and Congress to get this money flowing to fight the Zika virus. How big of an impact is Zika going to have on the summer games? Well, it, 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 Zika is going to have a, a really significant impact on the rhetoric before the summer games. Uh, the women's soccer team say we are probably not going. Uh, the USOC uh, executive director and president, uh, Scott Blackman, says it's up to individual athletes. So there is a level of uncertainty at the very least, which is very important for all world athletes training, not just American athletes. And so between now and the staging before the Rio events in Houston, we've got a lot of 
outdoor athletes that are concerned and the indoor guys who are uh, you know, walking around Rio outdoors. Uh, the Zika virus is a significant issue that doesn't go away. You have millions of people in Brazil. It's a world health crisis. The best thing about it is maybe we have some time to have some meaningful protocol to deal with this issue, but time is running out. Yeah, you know, and, and a lot of other issues in Brazil as well, too. It's going to be a very interesting uh, a Winter Olympic game, uh, not just for the sporting aspect of everything, uh, too. And we also want to talk about Super Bowls, Rick. We know uh, the NFL recently announcing uh, some Super Bowls being distributed to different cities, Atlanta, one of them Miami, one of them as well. But uh, as you know, uh, the Super Bowl is not always a good deal for the local cities that host them. Well, yeah, I know in a way, but in a lot of other ways I don't because the economic impact of a Super Bowl is $750, $800 million. They now have two weekends of activities. L.A. is building a new facility, Atlanta, Miami with a $400 million renovation to put a cover on it. They wouldn't do that if they didn't think the significant economic impact were there. And a lot of people are saying, well, the NFL is doing the wrong thing. It's blackmail. They are awarding these cities for their public investment. And there are a lot of naysayers who say economic impact isn't really true in sporting events. The one thing that is true is the Super Bowl. We know that 150,000, 200,000 people come in for those games. They only have 70,000 seats, hotels, restaurants. The economics for mega events like that cannot be questioned. I hear you. Having covered the Super Bowl, also being from South Florida and seeing how, uh, specifically in Palm Beach County, how it was very badly mismanaged, uh, didn't really take advantage of the situation. I also have a hard time uh, dealing with billionaires who need taxpayers to help them pay for their sports uh, facilities. He paid for this facility himself. So you're in the right place. Right, right. He did, but not everybody does. And I know uh, specifically in Atlanta right now, uh, they have a big issue uh, with the Braves new stadium in Cobb County, which is where I was born. Uh, and there is nobody happy with that situation up there. Well, especially their pitching. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, uh, a friend of mine sent me a picture. He's at the game this afternoon in Atlanta and it, it, there's nobody there in the stands. And I say, hey, that looks a lot like 1990. I remember, I remember that pretty well. I'm out. you got to win for people to show up. I don't care who paid for the stadium. That's, that's true. I think they're just cle trying to clear, all, clear the decks before they move into that fancy new stadium next year. But on that front, I mean, when the Super Bowl comes to town, uh, there, the, the, kind of the data is all out there. Uh, the, usually the city itself takes somewhat of a hit, but it's the businesses, the vendors, actually, who benefit the most financially, right? Uh, let, let, let's, let's, let's put it even broader. There is a host committee that raises 15 or $20 million dollars public safety, those are the people that kind of, on the balance sheet, they are operating in the black or close to it. But it's the awareness, it's the mentions, it's the hoteliers, it's the restaurants, as you call it, the vendors. So, and the teams, by the way, who host the Super Bowl, don't make a lot of money on it. It is the community that does. They benefit from the goodwill, but Steve Ross and the guys in LA and Arthur Blank in Atlanta, believe me, aren't gonna make a lot of money from the Super Bowl itself, but the goodwill it generates. It's the prestige, right? There's a lot of prestige that goes along with it, too. Right, exactly. And, and, and now that you talked about Milwaukee negatively, you ought to pray that they don't get a Super Bowl in the future because you're going to be shut out, my friend. Well, no, no, no offense to Milwaukee. I was just pointing out the fact I would love to go to Milwaukee. I think we could do some brewery tours. Uh, I would love to see that part of the city, uh, get some kielbasa or whatever they eat up there. But, uh, you know, in terms of hanging out there, uh, who would you, where would you rather hang out, South Beach in February or Milwaukee in February? Let's be honest. No question. And by the way, one quick thing before Berliner gets back. You remember Wally Pipp? You remember he was injured and then Luke Garrett came in for him and, you know, 18 years later, Wally Pipp was out. So, Ed, I don't know where you are, but you better get back quick because there's someone in your chair that's doing much better. How's that? Go oh, ahead. wow. I don't know. We'll send, it, we'll send that out to Ed. We'll put it on social media. I'm sure he'll appreciate that. Uh, Rick, great to see you as always. It's been a long time. I uh, remember working with you many years ago back at Channel 12 in, in West Palm Beach. Good to see you again. Awesome, man. We'll talk next week. See you later. Thanks. All right, there you go. Rick Hoare, the sports professor. Great to talk to him, as always. Very interesting, this dynamic. I really do have a big problem. Uh, Stephen Ross excluded because he's paying for this himself. But these billionaires who need money from the taxpayers to build their stadiums, it doesn't always work out so well for the taxpayers. It really sh should stop. All right. Uh, as always, we like to hear from you here on the hard line. You can reach out to us on social media. Here's our contact info if you need to reach us. Newsmax.com slash comments. Probably the best way to reach us and make sure we see what you have to say. Also, you can reach us at facebook.com slash the hardline and twitter.com at the hardline. There you go. That's going to do it for this episode. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll have more of that focus group. And Steve Malsberg is coming up next right here on Newsmax TV. John Bachman, thanks for taking it.